people. I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. And today we're here to talk about HP ProLiant BL460C Gen 8 Server Memory Upgrade Kits and how to properly configure the system. For starters, the HP ProLiant BL460C Gen 8 is the exact same from a memory standpoint as the uh, BL465C Gen 8. The only difference is that the uh, 65 takes uh, AMD and the um, 460 takes Intel. Now, that note, it takes two Intel CPUs. They're Intel E5 2600 V1 or V2 series procs, which is an LGA 2011 socket. There are 16 DIMM slots inside, and it accepts uh, DDR3 memory. It takes a couple of different speeds, 1066, 1333, 1600, or all the way up to 1866 megahertz. There are a couple different sizes you can use, all the way down from 2 gigs up to 4 gig, 8 gig, 16 gig, and it will max out with 32 gig sticks. So on that note, how, uh, what's the most that you can put in? Can put into it? Well, it depends on the type of RAM that you're actually using. So there's two types of RAM it accepts. There is um, load reduced memory also known as LRDIM and there's also ECC registered known as RDIM. With ECC registered you can max out with 16 32 gigs uh, all the way up to 512 gigabytes at 1600 megahertz. However with load reduced there's a little bit of advantage on the speed. It'll also be 16 by 32 gig for 512 gigabytes but you can do 1866 uh, megahertz. So a little bit of advantage either way that you go um, you're fine and you can max out with um, ECC registered or LRDIM. Uh, personally, we always recommend LRDIM just because you can get a little bit better speed out of it. So uh, on that note, let's go ahead and open it up. We'll show you how to configure the system. Uh, we'll show you some of the different memory channels and all that good stuff. But before we do, I want to get my ESD gear on because uh, we never want to open a machine without uh, ESD protection. So I'll be right back. All right, now that we have our ESD gear on, we are safe to open the machine and prevent it from electrostatic discharge. So first things first, you want to push the hood release and pull back. You'll notice that it, it will pop open and you can just simply lift it up and put the top to the side, very simple. So unfortunately this, bl this blade is a, a little bit complicated to get into, nothing that's not um uh, not, nothing that's that hard to overcome, but it's definitely uh, got a few steps, and luckily HP has uh, numbered them all for you to make it a little bit easier, but I want to show you how to do it. So uh, first things first, you have uh, step one. You just want to push this tab together, or pinch it together, however you look at it, and just kind of lift it up. Once you do that, you'll see number two over here. You can actually lift this up, put it to the side, and then you will see uh, step three over here. Um, you're just going to uh, simply pull this up, very simple. And you'll notice on this there actually are two connectors down here. So when you put it back in, you just need to line everything back up and then put it to the side. Um, and then you are able to actually physically get into the rest of the machine. Um, but before I remove the air baffles, I wanted to note um, on the air baffles, are the actual labels for the channels uh, as far as which slot is which slot. So um, one, sometimes um, it's on the motherboard itself. So sometimes people put it to the side and they're trying to figure out what slot is what. Um, so on this note, we'll talk a little bit about this before we get any further in. So we talked about there's two CPUs. Uh, CPU one is right here. CPU two is actually under this uh, card right here. Um, CPU one controls uh, the eight DIMM slots right here. CPU two controls the eight DIMM slots right here. There are four memory channels per CPU and there are two uh, DIMM slots per memory channel, which is important because uh, it, it, you don't have to run into the rank rule issue uh, with ECC registered memory um, and you can actually max it all the way out and uh, not run into the quad rank uh, issue. So um, now I'm going to show you how to physically get in here. So you're going to want to take this connector and be gentle here because you don't want to rip out any cords. So just kind of loosely shake it back out and you can pull it out. Some people would prefer to actually uh, do the, the wiring, I you know, either to each your own. Uh, I personally like to do it like this as long as you can be safe with it. So now that, you could, uh, that I've uh, removed the cable, you can simply just pull the air baffle up on both sides. Okay and they just come straight up, very simple, okay? And now we're physically in and we can access everything, um, but before we load it up, one of the things that I personally always like to do that makes it a little bit easier is I like to open all the tabs, uh, make sure it's completely just open, so that way when I'm in here and I'm actually holding a module, I'm not fumbling around trying to push a tab down uh, and potentially drop a module and damage the motherboard or damage a module, just little things to make your life a little bit easier as you're going. All right, so I've got them all open, so I'm physically ready to uh, load this up. Before we load this up, I want to note, 
you will notice on the module there's a notch also known as a key this key is important for a number of reasons um, it prevents users from one putting in the wrong memory so for instance if you grabbed an old DDR2 module and you were trying to put it in here it physically wouldn't fit if you had a newer DDR4 module and you try to put it in here it physically would not fit the notches on different spots for those modules it's also important because the notch um, is on the motherboard itself so if you flip it the wrong way, you can do one of two things. You could damage the lead, which could you know, basically uh, break the module, or you could damage the motherboard, which is even worse, because then you have to replace the motherboard. So uh, just one of those things you need to make sure you line it up uh, to make sure everything's accurate. It's also important, too, to note um, the start of the memory channel um, is the white slot. So if you were not maxing this out, let's say you were putting four DIMMs in, you would use white, white, white white if you're putting eight dims in assuming you have two cpus of course you'd go white 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 basically skipping all the blacks okay um they do this uh, the reason to do this is you want to have the proper balance um across the, you want to uh, have the, the right balance across the load so if you were to um uh, put two modules in here as opposed to putting them in this channel you're getting nothing out of this channel um, and, and it's based from a performance standpoint and and making sure that you're doing the best for uh, load management so it's really just that simple but anyhow I'm gonna go ahead and physical load it up uh, one of the things I would like to note for you um, again of course line it up but you're gonna hear a click one of the things we hear quite often is someone thinks that they have a bad module and it's it's just not properly seated so once you get it seated you're gonna hear this click right here Okay, you hear that click? That click basically lets you know that the module is fully seated. If it wasn't fully seated, um, you know, you basically won't hear the click. Okay, so just a nice little click. All right, very simple, but these little things um, do cause uh, big errors for customers, and and uh, you don't want any issues, so we just want to make it easy for everybody. Okay, someone could be running that issue right now that's watching this, so... Just like that, uh, in a matter of a couple of minutes, you can pop in 16 modules with relative ease. Um, and it's one of the things that I always like to tell uh, customers as well. Uh, sometimes to buy new systems, uh, I mean, it can range in tens of thousands of dollars depending on the configuration. It's just so expensive for new systems. Um, so one of the things that you can do to extend the life of your system is upgrading your RAM. It really is the best way to boost the performance, um, and it's really a great Band-Aid uh, to kind of uh, add a couple of years life to your system as a whole so you don't have to go spend tens of thousands of dollars and upgrade to the latest and greatest. And then by the time, you know, that the stuff that's the latest and greatest is a few years from now, it's going to be three to five thousand dollars dollars and uh, you can go you know buy it then and and continue down that path so uh, one of the things we always say is hey refurbish is really a great option so anyhow we'll go ahead and uh, put this all back together uh, really it won't be too hard you're gonna put the air baffles back in make sure you put the connector back in common mistake so same thing be very gentle okay now we have the other air baffle and just gonna simply slide it in Okay, and really you're just working your way back. You um, have to kind of follow the same steps. We talked about the two connectors. So you're just gonna wanna place this back on here. And then same thing, number two, you're gonna line it up. Put it down. And then you're gonna put number one back. And just like that and then put the lid on and you're done so well first off thank you guys for stopping by uh, if you've made it this far in the video do us a favor and uh, smash the subscribe button down below uh, if you need any upgrades for your machine as a whole um, or any other machine not even just this blade uh, do us a favor and reach out to sales at cloudninjas.com that's sales at cloudninjas.com and thank you guys for stopping by have a great day